Ever wondered why humans have a fascination for the stars and the universe, but struggle to fully embrace the concept of evolution? It's a question that's both perplexing and deeply significant. To grapple with it, we must first delve into the heart of the matter, the concept of evolution itself. Evolution, at its most basic, is the process through which species change and adapt over time. It's the reason why we have such a vast and varied array of life on Earth, from the humblest single-celled organisms to the most complex mammals. It's the engine that drives biodiversity, shaping and reshaping life in response to the ever-changing conditions of our planet. Despite its fundamental role in shaping life as we know it, evolution remains a contentious topic. To some, it's a well-established scientific theory grounded in solid evidence. To others, it's a controversial idea that challenges deeply held beliefs and worldviews. This divide often stems from misunderstandings and misconceptions about what evolution is and how it works. For instance, many people believe evolution is a linear process, with species gradually improving and becoming more advanced over time. In reality, evolution is a much more chaotic and unpredictable process, driven by random genetic mutations and the relentless pressure of natural selection. It's not about becoming better or more advanced but about adapting to survive and reproduce in a given environment. Others struggle with the timescales involved in evolution. It's hard to wrap our heads around the idea that the changes we're talking about took place over hundreds of millions of years. That's a time span so vast it's almost inconceivable, and it's no wonder that it can be difficult to fully grasp. So why do we, as humans, find it so hard to accept the concept of evolution? Is it because it challenges our notions of special creation and our place in the universe? Or is it simply because it's a complex and counterintuitive idea that's hard to understand? Today we dive into the world of evolution, debunking common misconceptions and exploring why it's harder for some to accept. Now you might be thinking, evolution is just a theory, right? Well, that's our first common misconception. Let's start with the meaning of the word theory. In our everyday language, we often use theory to describe a hunch or a guess. However, in the realm of science, a theory is much more than that. It's a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world that is acquired through the scientific method and repeatedly tested and confirmed through observation and experimentation. It's not a simple conjecture, it's a powerful explanation backed by a wealth of empirical evidence. So when we say that evolution is a theory, we're not saying it's a mere guess or a hypothesis. Rather, we're stating that it's a robust scientific explanation that has stood the test of time and rigorous scrutiny. It's a theory in the same way that the theory of gravity or the germ theory of disease is a theory, grounded in evidence and widely accepted within the scientific community. This brings us to another common misconception. Some people believe that evolution is an attempt to disprove the existence of God or any higher power, but that's not the case. Evolution simply explains the process of how life forms have changed and adapted over time. It's about understanding the diversity and interconnectedness of life on Earth. Consider this. The theory of gravity explains why an apple falls from a tree, but it doesn't tell us why the apple tree exists in the first place or who might have planted it. Similarly, the theory of evolution explains how species change over time, but it doesn't attempt to answer metaphysical questions about why life exists or who, if anyone, might be responsible for its creation. Many scientists and religious individuals alike see no contradiction between accepting the scientific validity of evolution and maintaining a belief in a higher power. They view science and religion as addressing different types of questions. Science deals with the how, while religion deals with the why. So evolution as a scientific theory doesn't aim to disprove the existence of God. It doesn't negate the possibility of a divine being or a higher power. It merely provides a scientifically verified explanation of how life forms have evolved over time, based on evidence gathered from the natural world. Just as understanding the theory of gravity doesn't deny the existence of an architect who designs buildings, understanding the theory of evolution doesn't deny the existence of a higher power that may have set the universe in motion. So you see, evolution doesn't deny the existence of a higher power, it merely explains the process of how life forms have changed over time. We've all heard the phrase survival of the fittest, right? But is that all there is to evolution? Well, not quite. It's a common misconception that survival of the fittest equates to survival of the strongest or the most intelligent. It's easy to imagine that in the wild world of nature, the most physically robust or cunning creatures are the ones that come out on top. But that's not exactly what Charles Darwin, the father of evolution, meant when he coined the phrase, 
You see, fit in this context doesn't refer to muscle mass, IQ, or any other measure of superiority we might typically think of. Rather, it refers to an organism's ability to survive and reproduce in its specific environment. The fittest are simply those who are the best adapted to their surroundings, those who can best navigate the challenges and opportunities their habitat presents. Consider the humble peppered moth. In pre-industrial England the lighter colored variety of this moth was more common because it could easily blend in with the lichen-covered trees and avoid predation. However, as the Industrial Revolution set in, soot from factories darkened the trees. Suddenly the darker colored variety of the moth had the advantage and their numbers increased. Neither variety was stronger or smarter but one was better fit for the changing environment. Similarly, think about the bacteria that become resistant to antibiotics. They're not stronger or more intelligent than the non-resistant bacteria. They've simply developed a mutation that allows them to survive in an environment where antibiotics are present. As a result, they reproduce and pass on this trait to their offspring, becoming the fittest in this context. So when we talk about evolution and survival of the fittest, we're not talking about a brutal competition where only the most formidable survive. We're talking about a complex dance with nature, where adaptation and flexibility are key. It's about being able to roll with the punches that life throws, and being able to pass on those survival skills to the next generation. So it's not about being the strongest or the smartest, but rather, being the best suited to your environment. So evolution is all about random mutations that lead to new species, isn't it? Well, not exactly. It's a common misconception to think of evolution as a purely random process. Yes, mutations, which are changes in the DNA sequence, do occur randomly. They can be caused by errors during DNA replication or by environmental factors like radiation, but that's only a part of the story. Here's where natural selection steps in and it's anything but random. Natural selection is the process by which characteristics that make an individual better adapted to its environment become more common in a species over generations. It's often summed up as survival of the fittest, but it's more about reproductive success than physical strength. Let's break it down. A random mutation might cause a giraffe to be born with a longer neck. If this longer neck helps the giraffe reach more food and survive long enough to reproduce, it's more likely to pass on this trait to its offspring. Over many generations, long necks become more common in the giraffe population. That's natural selection in action, and it's a key driver of evolution. Now, it's important to note that natural selection isn't about designing perfect organisms. It's a process of trial and error. Some mutations are beneficial, some are harmful, and many have no effect at all. But over time the beneficial mutations tend to accumulate and the harmful ones tend to be weeded out. So, while the mutations that fuel evolution are indeed random, the process of evolution itself is not. It's shaped by the non-random force of natural selection, which selects for traits that improve an organism's chances of survival and reproduction. In short, evolution isn't a roll of the dice, it's more like a game of poker. Yes, the cards you're dealt are random. But how you play them? That's where skill, or in this case natural selection, comes into play. Evolution isn't a roll of the dice but a complex interplay of random mutations and non-random natural selection. We've debunked some common misconceptions about evolution, but why is it still so hard for some to accept? This question in essence brings us to the heart of our evolution conversation. The resistance to evolution is often multifaceted. It can be deeply rooted in religious beliefs where evolution is seen as conflicting with literal interpretations of creation. Misunderstanding of the concept is another significant hurdle. Evolution is often misconstrued as a theory of origins, which it is not. It's about how life changes over time, not how life began. Lastly, there's the quintessential human tendency to resist change, especially when it challenges long-held beliefs. But remember, evolution isn't about belief, it's about understanding. Understanding evolution is crucial for comprehending the world around us, so keep exploring, keep learning, and remember, Science doesn't claim to have all the answers, it seeks them.